All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Zach Piper. Welcome to the intro to test driven development, how to safely make changes workshop. I'm sure I picked like the longest name possible for a workshop, but there it is. Uh, again, my name is Zach Piper. I'm an instructor at Coding Dojo and welcome. Uh, I am really excited to be spending the next about hour and a half or so with you. Uh, hopefully you've been able to uh, be able to clone my repo and be able to get everything all set up to go. Even if not, I hope that you can still learn something from this about test driven development. Ideally, you're starting this out as a, a person who does not have much experience with test driven development. Maybe you've done a little bit in Ruby, but this is mostly focused on Rails test driven development. And uh, again, I expect to have this go for about 90 to 100 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the Discord chat for me to look at. And I'll break for questions every now and then. Last thing I think is the uh, we'll be using breakout rooms a few times during this uh, to get warmed up and then as just kind of like a workshop more setting to just once you have all the materials to just go forth with it. Uh, so with that, and last thing is that I am definitely not a slideshow god. So have very low expectations for how well I put together this, uh, this slideshow. I added a couple of photos, you know, I changed a couple of colors. I, I did what I, what I could. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's just get started. Uh, this is our agenda for the day. We are going to plan on just defining test-driven development to start off with and when you would be wanting to use this. Uh, start off really quickly with some breakout rooms after a very small amount of vocabulary and after some more vocabulary and a tour around what you'll be working with, you'll be able to get back into your breakout rooms in order to try out uh, all the materials that I've set up for you. And in the uh, slideshow itself that I'll send to you guys after our first set of breakout rooms. There'll be some extra resources at the end for you to look at or just links for you to explore through while you're doing your breakout final breakout rooms as well. So without that, uh, let's get started. Uh, anyone, can anyone give me a definition of test-driven development before I just go over to that slide and start talking about it? Um, write the test first and then write the code. Yeah, that's actually number five. That's basically the, the mantra of test driven development of red, green and refactor of number five. So we'll definitely, you know, come back to that. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyone else have anything else they want to add to that? All right. And that's totally fine because I'm here to talk to you about it. Talk to you about it. So, test driven development is mainly a methodology used in order to write tests before you write code in order to ensure that everything else inside of the application is working. One of the main parts, again, about this is to safely make changes. We don't just take a giant code base, start changing a bunch of stuff inside of it, especially if it's part of our job or part of the team that we're working with, and then just push that stuff to development and cross our fingers and hope that that all works out for us. We use this methodology in order to make sure that the code we are writing is still going to make everything else function the way that we expect it to or want it to before we add in the stuff that we want to do. Mainly today, we are focused on user behavior with the Capybara gem, but uh, there are other things that you can test inside of TDD as well. So uh, there's some work that I've done the, before you got this repo that I put onto GitHub, uh, but just to quickly go over it in case you're wanting to make, say, a new application that involves all the stuff inside of it. I've modded or added in uh, these four gems that I put in the bullet point. And then the six things that I put inside of here uh, are either command or terminal entries, or like the uh, config line here, the third one here, it's something that I added into the 
uh, this Rails helper file that we'll look at like way later down the line. But uh, this uh, third line here, as we found out just before we started all of this out, it can uh, be, if you followed the instructions that I gave you guys, this line might not be in your Rails helper RB file anymore. So just uh, scroll a little bit further up uh, in the chat in order to see whether it's missing or not and to see how to get it back in or where to put it, depending on what you would rather do. Um, so the first thing to just talk about, we're expecting you know, user behavior or we're performing user behavior in our applications and then we are expecting some sort of result from that. We can treat this, you know, firstly, very, you know, low level, like uh, just day to day activities before we get into putting it more into effect with Rails and putting it into like Visual Studio Code or whatever text editor that you are using. Uh, the main, main word of vocabulary before we get into our first uh, breakout rooms for this is the word expect to say that I think that this is what is going to happen after I have done all of the user behavior that I want to do. And we'll talk about how to get that user behavior to happen way later in this. But again, first, very low level uh, work on this. So I, I expect this math problem to end with the result of eight. Uh, you can also think about it in some sort of a negative sort of aspect as well, is that I expect to not do something. Uh, but overall, just what this word is to say is just that, again, after everything that the user has done or what I ask my test users to do inside of my application, that this is going to happen. Whether it is or isn't going to happen, I expect that to happen. Um, any questions before I uh, pretty much put you guys in breakout rooms and start to uh, get you guys warmed up with this? All right, then without further ado. So I have this little uh, bit of text for you of just, I expect six plus seven to blank. In some breakout rooms that I'll set you guys up in, I'm probably put, gonna put about like seven or so people in a group in a breakout room, I'll say. Uh, come up with about three or four ways in order to complete this sentence. Um, try your best to come up with complex ones. I know there's probably one really easy one to just grab right away, but try your best to come up with some other ones there. And after five or so minutes, I'll bring you guys all back in and we will talk about what you guys came up with. So everyone clear on what we're doing or have any questions before I split you guys off? I have a question. Yes. Uh, this is Gautam from India. Like, uh, what is the main difference between uh, uh, test-driven development and uh, the behavior-driven de development? So the main difference between the two is going to be that test-driven development is more broadly uh, speaking, a, a general, uh, we're, we're more so doing behavior-driven development because we are having our users do stuff. Test-driven development is kind of the bigger uh, umbrella that behavior driven development is contained inside of because you can test many other things as I said earlier inside of test driven development we're mainly going to be focusing on user behavior. Yeah, I have a question. Great, thank you. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I wanted to just um, go through the um, vocabulary you showed earlier before this. I didn't really grab what you were referring to. Oh, sorry. Could you say that one more time? The previous page or the oh, previous sure, sure. slide where you had yes. Um, vocabularies. Yes. You just want me yeah. to go over this again? Yes, please. Sure, sure. So when you have your user do whatever behavior you expect inside of your application, you're going to have them go to a particular page, do a certain thing, click a certain button, maybe go to another page, do another thing, and so on. And we'll talk about how that sort of stuff is all done later on in this workshop. 
uh, at the end of the day, at a certain point in the user doing all of this stuff, you're going to say, okay, at this point in the application, I expect this to be true. I expect this to be true. I expect to, when we get into more code examples, I expect to see something on the page. I expect to be at a certain location in the application. I expect to be maybe using this particular controller inside of my application. Uh, so this is just the final step, uh, or it can be a, a partway step that you could use as well, but we're mainly gonna talk about it as an end step. But after all your behavior is all done, this is what you expect to be true inside of your application. Does that help you? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, so let's get you guys broken up. And there you go. You should have an invite to join a breakout room. All right, so uh, just like Penny just did in Discord chat, thank you. Would you guys mind posting a couple of things in the Discord chat as to what you came up with for this? Yeah, not be nil, to be equal to seven plus six, not be blank, yeah. To be true, to be greater than 12, to be odd. All seem good to me. Let's give you guys another little bit of time to just get it out. And yes, I loved the six to be afraid of seven as just a by the way that one wins this round in my opinion here are some uh others i think these are probably all said at this point but just to say uh in case you need to look at some other things but again all of these are true whether they start with uh to not be or to be they are all true. I'd like to say I double check these to make sure that they are all true, but uh, they should all be true in this. Now, this is again just to get you guys warmed up into behavior. And now we're going to next step into a little bit more user esque behavior, but not not quite yet uh, with one more uh, example here. So, my next one that I'll split you guys up two into is uh, two different ones that are exactly opposites of one another that I expect blank when I make a successful or unsuccessful trip through the Starbucks drive through uh, With this uh, successful meaning everything goes exactly the way that you want it to go and unsuccessful means that something along the way doesn't go quite right. Again, I'm, I'm a fan of funny ones if you have funny ones, uh, but also try to come up with uh, funny ones or complex ones if you have them as well. And then I uh, will do the same thing. I'll bring you guys back after about seven minutes and you guys can just post in the Discord chat what you guys have come up with. Any questions before I break you guys out again? Uh, yeah, one question. What was the prompt again? Uh, it's right here at the top here. I expect, I'll, I'll copy it into the, uh, uh, or I'll write it into the chat, uh, but it's, I expect blank when I make a successful or unsuccessful because I have two different prompts, trip through the Starbucks drive through All right, so I will open this back up. And there you are. Okay, 
So here's a couple that I had come up with when I was making this slide deck. Uh, anyone else have anything that they want to post into the chat? Uh, I'll read a couple while I'm on the recording here, but I expect a hot drink to be hot. I expect that the Starbucks is going to be open. Um, I expect my car to work. Uh, I expect the cup to not break uh, for the successful trip. And for the unsuccessful trip, we've got to not end up with French fries. I was thinking about putting something like that in there. I was going to put like a hamburger or something like that, but uh, that my order is wrong, uh, that I have no coffee when I leave. Uh, we could talk about how I don't drink coffee at all, but that's another conversation for another day. Uh, yeah, any any other ones? Okay, I think you guys got them mostly out in the last like couple of minutes. Um, okay, so now that we are warmed up with thinking about, uh, this is much more of a context that I want you guys to, to think of as like successful or unsuccessful, because now we're gonna talk about how to start to write uh, tests in code. So inside of a specific file that I will show you guys eventually uh, when we get back out of this slide deck, uh, we'll be seeing a couple of keywords besides the word expect. The other two main ones are going to be feature and scenario. Feature in the what we just uh, did in our last exercise would be like a trip to the Starbucks drive through or it could be like the creation of a user, or it could be the whole login and registration process. Potentially, you can break it up kind of as little as you would like, but generally these features should be big aspects of your application that you have made uh, up to this point. When you get to scenarios, that's breaking down that general aspect of the application into more specific scenarios, or scenarios not a word I should use, situations that you're wanting to test out when you are doing this. So if you want to say test out the successful trip, you would say that like I go to, you know, I go to Starbucks, I order, I get my order, I pay, and then I drive away. Uh, I expect to be happy at that point, or I expect to have a drink inside of my hand, pretty much put this point, you know, all of the expects that you put for that successful trip. And for the unsuccessful trip, kind of the same stuff at the start. Like when you get your, uh, you drive to the Starbucks, you make your order, you get your drink, you know, what at that point or at some point along the way, something could go awry. Maybe you don't have that car. Maybe someone said uh, there was a bunch of different crazy ones that we came up with in regards to the unsuccessful trip. But the point is, is that even if it's an unsuccessful trip, I expect something about that trip to still be true. And that's maybe one of the harder parts of this that I just want to make sure that I point out with this in that even if it's something that doesn't work at the end of the day, you still expected it to not work or expected that this certain thing happened. And as long as that expect works out and passes and is true, then your application will give you a thumbs up and say that you are all good to go. Uh, someone just said in the uh, chat that this looks very similar with like describe and it. And yes, they are pretty much the exact same things. Uh, if you have done any Ruby TDD, they're just different words when it comes to the specific gems that we are using inside of this particular workshop. Uh, so I have uh, one example in a file when we get to the file, the actual file tour uh, near the end of this. But before I move on from this slide, any questions at this point? All right, awesome. So next up, uh, with the uh, two scenarios of successful and unsuccessful trip that I just laid out, there could be a lot of things in the very beginnings of that, of just making a trip to Starbucks or making a trip to the drive through that you might want to be able to do every single time you do any one of these feature tests. So you can use the word 
before in order to say, I get in my car, I drive to Starbucks, I make sure I pull into the correct drive through lane so that when you start your scenario, that sort of stuff is already all done for you and established in your user behavior before you then pick up at the point where you want to with a successful trip or an unsuccessful trip or whatever you are trying to do for your, uh, for your particular feature that you are testing. And I think uh, in the very near future, I will make sure I pin this as well. And I'll give you guys this slide deck as well so that you can look at any of these slides uh, in the future. Uh, but going back to that uh, mantra from way back uh, at the beginning or about you know half an hour ago at this point, make that sound like that was forever. But we have the mantra of test driven development of red, green, and refactor. The first goal of TDD is not to just start writing your code and then writing your tests to make sure that your code does what you expect it to do. It is the reverse order of that. You want to write the test first and make sure that it fails or it should fail, even if you maybe don't even, even have the file set up or you don't even have a route set up at this point, but you expect it to not work. Then you write the minimal amount of code in order to be able to pass that test. And then if you need to, in order to potentially pass other tests or to make things more in the fashion that you want to at this point, you can refactor your code around just so that you are again writing the smallest amount of code that you need in order to pass your tests. Sometimes it's fun when you're starting off with TDD to just start writing your tests like with the idea of what you want to have uh, at the end of the day or your wireframe that you have and just write the tests in order to do it all and then write all of the code needed for it. Um, but probably it should be more like smaller chunks on both sides. But at the end of the day, you never run the application is where I'm trying to go with this. You just use the tests in order to make sure that you are doing everything that you want to accomplish. And then at the very end, when you're writing all your tests, you can run your application and see that you have a fully working application, all good to go. Um, so with that, uh, this part is a little bit optional. And again, don't forget about if you have followed everything in the readme that I set up inside of the repo, uh, this one, there's, there's a certain line that does disappear inside of a certain file that I'll point out when we get over to the files. But in case you are wanting to deal with your models, uh, at any point and you're wanting to just consistently make a specific user every single time or make a user and a post every single time. Uh, because as I point out in a future slide uh, that maybe I could have put in this slide, you are using a completely separate uh, test uh, database as opposed to the normal uh, maybe just development uh, database or the deployment database that you would use when you're at different stages of your uh, application. Uh, so you're able to just make as many users as you would like, for example, inside of your test database, and it won't affect your development or your deployment database at the end of the day. Uh, but when you want to use factory bot in order to maybe cut down on a couple of things, you can create a factory, provided you've done all the steps in the readme, then you should have a factories folder all set up to go inside of your spec folder. But once you make that, you're able to make a factory of whatever you would like. And then inside of your test that you're using, you can use the build command and then whatever factory you are associating with that you can uh, then do whatever you would like at that point once you have your user made, it's up to you, whatever you're testing. Next slide of how to do it <laughs> uh, more so. When you are uh, all done with writing your tests out, because again, that is the first step of this, you're going to run the command that at least starts with, um, I misspelled spec, or R spec. So this should be R spec, by the way. Uh, but R spec spec is going to run every single test inside of your uh, spec folder, which is automatically created when you are installing all of your gems in order to run your tests. You will get back from that periods, or maybe I've seen different things besides periods, but generally, as far as I've seen periods or Fs based on whether what you expected to happen at after all of your behavior uh, has happened or has not happened. 
Uh, so just as a reminder, if what you expected to happen or what you expect the current state of your application to be is not true at that point, then you will get a failed or an F at that particular point and you'll need to maybe change something in your code uh, or make sure that you are writing a the test that you want to write in order to accomplish the feature that you're trying to make. Uh, and again, uh, there's a separate test development uh, test database to do everything in case it does not separate for you automatically. Uh, I've seen it just happen sometimes. I have the command in this slide deck in order for you to run that. Um, any questions at this point before I keep going? I don't have a super long amount of slides left to go. Santiago, I'll answer your question in a second. Um, I had one question on the red green refactor slide. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering if you could elaborate on why you emphasize um, the minimum amount of code needed. Um, sure. Like what, what's that word minimum doing there? Sure. So it means that we are just trying to write the cleanest uh, code as possible. We do not want to uh, add in or bloat our application any if we are not testing for it. We don't want to write stuff that's not tested for. Generally, you want most things inside of your application to be tested. So we're just keeping it down to the bare bones of what you need in order to accomplish this test. And if you have extra things that you need to write on top of that, then that could possibly be something else that you want to test for as well. Okay, so it's sort of like if you, as you're writing the code, you get the feeling that you want to write like other code, maybe the thing you do is write some new tests first. Yeah, like uh, you don't necessarily want your scenarios to be too bloated uh, or to testing too many things. So it might be possible that you want to break apart that scenario into more specific scenarios uh, as opposed to just maybe a success or a not success. Uh, but yeah, just to kind of re-say again, but when you're when you're writing your tests, you want to uh, want to write as, as little amount of code as possible because we want everything to be tested at the end of the day. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. And this is more of a, uh, a features test than it is a unit test, I would say, for Santiago. All right. All right. So I think at this point, I need to give you guys this. So give me just a quick moment. And I'll make sure again that I pin it into the channel here before it disappears on me. But this is the slide deck so that in case you want to look at the uh, links inside of here. And while I'm here, yeah, let me just quickly make that little change there. Okay. So now we have uh, the syntax. Now that we have mostly everything all done at this point. Uh, we just need to figure out, or we have like the mindset of how we're going to do things. We have to talk about how we are going to do this stuff inside of our test files. So let me open these up. So in general, uh, you're going to be, again, we're replicating user behavior, at least this is the focus of this with the Capybara gem here. So we are going to be having our users move around our application with say the visit, you're able to use just straight up uh, paths if you would like to, or you can use name paths if you would like to. They can 
click on certain things on the page that you're looking at. I gave you guys a starting point of one page to work with, but at this point, you know, once we get our breakout rooms going, you're able to make whatever you would like uh, at that point to test whatever you would like. But then if you look around the other things that we've got here, there are many things that you can check to see whether uh, it just has a certain thing on the page with has content uh, or that it has a button or a table. Uh, generally, you're going to be focusing on uh, the page to have something or maybe not have something again. You can think in that negative sort of aspect if you would like to, uh, but totally up to you. But in general, uh, we're going to have our users fill out certain things, uh, maybe fill out a form and move around in order to get your user to a certain point. And then at that point, you test to see what is the case at that point and is that true or not. Um, let's see, anything else that I really want to talk about before I move on from here? I don't think so. I'd say all of these generally have the same amount of stuff inside, but just in case anything was different, I wanted to make sure there was a few things that you can look at. Uh, I think this GitHub had the most in it by far, if I had to pick one of them. But, uh, okay, with that. So for the rest of this, I'll be going over to my Visual Studio code in order to just show you where this stuff is located. And then we will break you guys out again, just to work together on getting some certain things to happen, whatever you guys would like to accomplish as a group. And then we'll regroup for a final Q&A. And then I just left contact information. We can just zoom right by that, but it's there in case you want to contact me. And lastly, with the slide deck, there are three slides about modularization. If you would like to go into that, if you want something else to potentially look at afterwards or during your breakout room session. Um, any questions before I move over to Visual Studio? All right, so, okay. So you guys have hopefully this on your uh, text editor of choice. Doesn't really matter which one you decide to do, but the main place in order to show you guys around and give you your tour is going to be this spec folder that has shown up. Inside of here, we have a couple of different things going on. The main uh, file that is working with everything is the Rails Helper RB file. The specific, uh, the specific line that we're just talking about, by the way, from the beginning of this lecture um, or workshop is this line on 34, just to make sure that you're including the factory bot stuff inside of there. If you would like to make those factories for your uh, users or whatever other kind of model that you have made inside of your application. Uh, you have a spec helper as well, but there's really not a whole lot going on inside of here, just some setup stuff. Okay, but at this point, then there is a factories file uh, that was set up uh, because I had set up a user model inside of here with three things, a first name, last name, and email. You're able to fill these in with whatever you would like to put inside of here. But if you again want to use that user keyword to build an instance, you will make whatever you put inside of this factory here. And the last uh, thing is I had created, this did not come uh, by default, but I created a features folder that has one file inside of it of creating a user spec RB, uh, essentially just giving a meaning to the file so that anyone who is looking at this can see that, oh, this file is meant to test this particular aspect. Even though I include that inside of the feature as well, you still wanna make sure that that file itself has a meaningful name to it. And then at this point, I have a single test that's completely filled out here. I could have been a little bit more specific with this to say 
uh, like unsuccessfully creating a user account by not filling in the name field for this. Uh, but I expected this page to not have the success uh, text that I would put when I make a user to show up. So if you want to try your hand uh, at creating a user successfully through the tests that we have or the tests that I have here, uh, then you are more than welcome to get started at that point and then go wherever you would like to from there. You have other folders that are inside of here for helpers and models and requests that you're free to start. They, they don't necessarily have anything in there that you have to worry about when you run the RSpec spec command at the very beginning when you were getting all set up. These, since they don't have any tests inside of them, they made an asterisk, I believe, instead on your, let me just run this here before I just guess. But they have, um, you, they have, yeah, asterisks here, just to say that, like, you know, these are not tests that you've actually done anything with, but they're here if you would like to. Uh, but the main thing is that you're testing features, at least that's the main point of this. Uh, I would say the other main one that you would be able to work with from what we've covered inside of this workshop would be the model section. You could test the user model out and trying to create a bunch of users in order to see whether something will be valid or invalid. Uh, and that's mostly everything. The rest of the application uh, is your oyster and not really anything that I have touched too much uh, in the attempts to just keep it focused on this. Uh, so I'll read the Discord chat in just a second, but any questions? Because uh, I think at this point, I'm ready to just let you guys go and go back to your breakout rooms. But yes, Capybara is a is a specifically user uh, interaction gem that RSpec is, RSpec is like the umbrella that includes Capybara inside of it, like Willard said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then uh, at this point, let me get you guys back into your rooms. A uh, factory bot does know what the user model should know what the user model is. Yes. If not, then uh, I will look into that, but I'm pretty sure that it is all good to go for you because I have a user class already. Yes. Yeah, it just reads from the existing models or your database. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe a couple other people have some questions. Just again, thanks for. Uh, coming. <laughs> uh, and it was a pleasure to have you guys if you do end up leaving during this time. But for this uh, next half an hour or so, I'm going to put you guys back into your breakout rooms so that you can just work together on making tests so that you have a bunch of people there to ask questions to in case you have any other questions as you start to get your hands dirty with it. Okay. So I will open things back up. All right, uh, that pretty much concludes the workshop. Thank you for joining me. Uh, just wanted to see if anyone wanted to like show anything that they did throughout the last half hour. It's totally fine. Didn't it's okay. 
uh, but again, uh, I hope I hope you took a little bit from this. At the very least, uh, I'm around if I'm needed for any questions uh, in the Discord for the next hour and a half at the very least, but I'll just be around in general. Uh, but again, thank you very much for joining me and maybe I will see I, you later, who knows? Oh yeah. I would have, a. I guess it's a simple question, but uh, yes. we uh, didn't figure it out. Uh, we wanted to do more than one user made by factory bot and like make them gotcha. do two we're, or more. We're trying to figure this out, but I think it's because the email can't be duplicated or something of the sort. So you might need something like a factory or faker, which can generate different fields sort of randomly for you. Mm -hmm. You know, the Discord is a fine place to exchange. I've seen a bunch of exchanging at this point already. So <laughs> I guess just keep it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, but then, yeah, I'll be around, but I'll see you guys maybe later. Thank you. 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 Great fun. Thank you. I'm glad you had fun.